this year's draft, if the board falls the way you're saying, I have no issue at this point because of what we've done already between the last two drafts and free agency of what's left to do on this team. I'm okay now at this point of waving my, I'm not usually into first round linebackers, especially, you know, inside, go ahead and take him. He's because at the very worst, I feel like he's a guy that has enough, a good enough first step and size. He can always go like sub package rusher on the edge. I mean, yeah, but still, we either way we need a he's three just a down good linebacker, all around linebacker. I'm, I guess, is my point. Like, even if he doesn't become that huge thumper in the traditional base three four, he's a good enough linebacker in coverage, running, all that. You can find a spot for him on this defense. Like, it yeah, wouldn't be like to me, he's a pretty safe pick, even if he doesn't work out at that exact spot you drafted him for. I think he, in a Patton type of defense, he would find a very good use for him for three downs because he's a good enough player to be on the field for three downs. I guess that's my point. I don't, so I don't mind that pick. No, I got you. I mean, I, I fully understand that, but I still just I can't, I can't get over the fact that Packers have had so many problems over the season and we all thought Blake was going to take this huge leap this year. And it's just been nothing but a shit show. And I understand he's also had a broken hand, but eh, I just, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the whole injury excuse because Blake, I think broke his hand two years ago or sprained it, had to wear a soft cast and still had 144 tackles. So I just, I don't know. I haven't seen that leap from him. So that's why I won't, that's why I won't sit there and and be ready like, okay, let's write him in the next year and re-sign him. No, because you know what you do? Blake Martinez is going to cost more money to re-sign Jay. And with that, if you let him walk and you draft a linebacker, you have more money available. Oh, what's that? You can go out and pick maybe up one more free agent that can make an impact. That's just me. Yep. I, like Blake is going to get paid because of stat sheet. Not I know someone will go pick be, him up because of it. Not because of his tape shows you that he he's made those steps. No, he had flashes this year, but flashes are not enough. I, I'm not a I'm not a okay. Let's keep a guy around that's going to be on the starting role because he's shown you four flashes in a 16 game season when he's played thousands of snaps. It's not enough. Dear God, if Chicago, I, it's like they they're giving Dallas. Every chance they can. Like 11 minutes to go, okay, they give the ball to Dallas. Dallas goes three and out, whatever. Now there's a little under eight minutes to go, and they're giving the ball back to Dallas. Like, come on, man. Like, that's why, because Dallas is a lower-end team now. I don't care how much the six wins. It was all against lower-record teams. Like, now they're proving they can't even beat a 500 team, because that's what Chicago is, a six and six average team. Because they're... They're not that good. They're just I know. not. And that's that's like the thing. all this all this talk pregame, this is the funny thing. All this talk pregame is all about their roster and how talented they are, and they're loaded with talent. No, they're not. That when they get on the field, all that talent can't win them games. So what is that ta- they're not that talent. Versus the other team, somehow or another, all that talent can't beat the the less talented team. Well, then you're not that freaking talented. It's not hard to figure out. Chicago's no, I got you. defense I agree. is far more talented player to player than Dallas's defense. They had one good year. They paid a couple of guys. Where the hell's Demarcus Lawrence been since he got paid? Like he's, it did you? You do realize decent. it took yeah, decent, and they paid him. Yeah, so is so is Trey Flowers. He's decent too, and he's making seventeen million a year. That's not, no, that's the, not no make, Trey Flowers is eh. Uh, he's decent. Yeah, no. For $90 million, he's a lot less than that. For if he was paid less, I'd say, yes, he's decent. But no. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, man. I can't do it. Actually, this is going to shock you. Do you want to know the stats on Demarcus Loris sacks? I thought he had higher, but guess where he is? Three. Five. 
five. I knew I knew it wasn't very many. That's why I said they're they're not that talented. Dak needs to get this ball moving down the field if he wants to even have a chance at coming back to tie it. They can't block anybody on the Bears. They're collapsing. Which is sad because you have all these offensive time. linemen that are paid. Dallas had their window. I think I've uh, I talked about this. Dallas had their window, and it was in them first two years of Dak, and it's it. Last year when they had the Cooper was the last year of their window. Yep. And then and they closed. Blew up the playoffs. Yeah. Now they ended up having to pay guys their offensive line. They yeah they paid them, but they're all getting they're all pushing their late twenties, early thirties, and injured as hell all the time. Do you know how bad I wanted in my draft to have Dak? Be gone by then, and then go ahead and pick a, a QB for Dallas. Who would they? Who who do you think they would draft if if Dak wasn't there? Because he's a free agent. This is if they had to go, if they had to go pick one. Oh God, this would make Dylan so mad. They have the money to do it too, because they wouldn't have to pay Dak to do it, and they could trade for him. Do you know who I would go get to basically use the running game like a machine and still have Cooper and Witten and Gallup as Bowles. as basically web- Huh? Bowles. Yep. Game manager. He's able to come in and run the scheme. Literally turn around, hand it off. Let Zeke get you three to or, or three to four yards at, for the first two carries. Come out, run a pass. Yeah, you may be telegraphing your offensive scheme. But how many times do we see that in the playoffs with Foles? Run, run, pass. And he'd be successful at it. Well, then the RPO has become very relevant. We know he's pretty damn good at that. Exactly. Jesus Christ, Dak. Dude, well, one thing I love about Troy Aikman on Cowboys games, he ridicules Dak so much. I love it. Because I think he looks at it and he goes, "Yeah, they're gonna pay this guy. Oh, Christ, I could go out there and if I if, pay me that, pay me half." Of he that. was the one volleying for uh, Tony Romo to to try and come in late in that Green Bay um, Dallas game where Rodgers threw that pass and then they walked it off. He said if they would have played Romo that one drive, Romo would have drained more clock off and been up and they give him Rodgers less time. Like that's, Aikman, that's, Aikman loved Romo. I'm I'm sorry, but Romo had some years left in him, and I, he just didn't want to go play somewhere else. And he was, he, I think he was. Now, when a broadcast right, booth offers him almost ten million dollars a year, I'm saying, to sit and had, talk. Had they had they not screwed up? Yeah, but the booth knew he was vulnerable and offered him that because they knew they could poach him off that team and get him to retire, because. Dallas did exactly what New Orleans did. They screwed up in the opposite way. Yeah. They should have allowed Tony Romo to come back in those last week or two, get ready for the playoffs, and play him in the playoffs. And whatever happened, you could have moved on to Dak the next year. Or or your best case scenario at that point was to do that, and Tony would have came back because he was only 36 years old. He turned 37 the end of that season. He was the same age as Rodgers. I mean, honestly, if Dallas were to do it... They would have been better off. Tony no, 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 no. What I'm saying is... Dak Prescott ever was. <clears throat> what, I, what I'm saying is, I feel like with the quarterbacks this year... They wouldn't need to spend a first on it. Like I feel like with their offense and the way it's built around Zeke and the way they should be able to use Zach Zeke. Was a late fourth. That I mean. I know, no, but what I'm saying is this year there's so much QB depth in in the uh, in this draft. You could wait till the second round and pick guys like Jacob Eason. I mean, there's 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 guys here that can go in the second round and Dallas could easily get them. And I feel like they can move on from paying $30 million to a QB who's not getting it done. It, period. Well, they're going to have to choose between Amari Cooper and, and Byron Jones or Dak Prescott, basically. If Dak leaves and they let go of Dak, they, they can pay. No, because they have almost $70 million in cap next year. If they let Dak walk, that's $30 million they can just 
not have to worry about paying. Byron Jones, Amari Cooper can stay. That's you can probably. They're, they're going to have to make a choice because you can't keep them all because you've got other guys that need to be paid that are core players too coming up. And you have to well, be able to prepare and pay them. Well, these young guys like Xavier Woods, Awuzier, there's yeah, there's all those guys in the secondary you're going to have to pay. And <clears throat> a biggie, Jeff Heath, their uh, strong safety that is injured right now, is going to have to get paid. In two years, you're going to have to pay uh, Jalen Smith. You're going to have to pay LVE. So, though, yeah, those are another two guys you're going to have to go in and do that with. Um, but, yeah, Dallas, I feel like, honestly, as silly as it sounds, I know to Cowboys fans, they're going to throw up their arms because they love Dak. If you let Dak walk and re-sign Cooper and you already have Zeke signed, you can re-sign Byron Jones, you can re-sign Jeff Heath. Hell, even re-sign Witten for another year. Shit. Freaking you. Oh, touchdown. Mari Cooper. I you can. Do that. <laughs> I have to. We have live folks. Um, I have to sit there and say this: that Dak Prescott is the best thing for the Cowboys and would reopen a Super Bowl window because they can get a QB in there that would play for the team and not himself. What are you saying? You, what, what are you trying to say about Dak Prescott? Spit it out. I said it. I feel like he hinders the team more than helps them. Okay, you gotta explain yourself a little further. Why? Well, what, what, he hinders the team. How? Because look, Jerry literally is, took is it, John Kitna. The, look, you want me to explain myself? I'm yes, doing yes, it. Yes, I do. John Kitna was signed specifically because Jerry thought he'd mesh well with Dak. Kellen Moore, as an OC, thought he'd come in and do well with. Dak. Both of those guys are there. Dak has good stats for the year, but the thing is, they're all against those lower record teams or garbage time like now, where they're down two touchdowns and they have to come back. He hinders the team. He makes the coaches focus on him instead of trying to use the weapon they have. Ezekiel Elliott. Drain the clock. When you have the lead, use Ezekiel Elliott getting a rookie QB to come in and have this mindset would help the team more. It would save the team money. It would reopen uh, Dallas' Super Bowl window a couple years down the road. Not to mention, I'm going to tell you right now, this whole thing with Dak Prescott and all these garbage time stats are pissing me off because my matchup was shady in our league. He's got Prescott. <laughs> and he had 4.4. Now he's got 12.4. It's like fucking ridiculous. Somebody break that kid's life. Jesus, calm down there, Sparky. Well, you know what? Garbage time stats should stop. Like, if you're down this much, you should no more. Championship rounds, you don't get <coughs> Why would Cohen run out of bounds? Because he's a goofball. Um, anyways, so I want to talk about this kid, Tyler Irvin, that we picked up for Green Bay as a return specialist. I watched a... Uh, a kickoff return he had, and, man, the kid can fly. He's not like Tremont Smith where they're like, oh, yeah, give him a little space. He has speed. No. This Tyler Irvin kid, it's literally Sonic the Hedgehog. He hit boost, and he just, I feel like with his speed and just one cut, he could be a special guy in the return game for us. But, but. The thing is, we have to have be able to guys to set blocks too, Jay. Our special teams blocking has been atrocious. Thank you. I got into this with the guys at the restaurant, and they're like, it's been oh, a horror. This, we need this returner, and why don't they go get this guy? And what do you think about the returner? And I kind of smiled, and I laughed. And I turned around, and I go, they could go get Desmond Howard, put him in a time machine. In his prime, get, yeah. Get him out of his, his prime when he was winning the Heisman. And he'll end up getting three yards every punt return. Nobody's blocking anybody. The gunners like on the outside literally let people like, just run by. It, it, no it is, it's, it's bad that you have to make seven moves and use your freaking your, your right stick like on Madden to get a yard and a half or two yards if you don't fair catch it. That's ridiculous. 